What is up heroes, this is Manny Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtues Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we found out that Luna is a golem. And we had quite the intense stare down as the AB game uh, door, or the AB room door shut. And we presumably played this AB game against Luna. And realistically, from a logical standpoint, it made so much sense to pick Betray, but I just couldn't do it against Luna. And we're going to find out if that is going to screw us over. So, let's go take a look. Ambidex Gate's now opening. What are we going to see when we head out of there? I don't know. Hey, Sigma! Are you insane? Why the heck did you choose Ally? Wait. We can talk about that later. Right now, we need to see if Luna was even in the other AV room. She's gone. Where'd she go? That's odd. We came out the moment the gates opened. There's no way she could have left already. Then... Then she didn't participate. There it was. I thought so. She didn't pick it up. Without the bracelet, she couldn't have voted. Then, she let the system vote ally for her? Results from round 3 will now be displayed. Let's go take a look at that results screen. Right, the results! Yeah, let's go have a look. I'm interested to see what the results look like when people don't participate as well. It's just gonna be two pictures. It's gonna be Phi and ourselves. That's hilarious. Death. Death, death, death. That's what's shown. Wow. And there you have it. Ally and ally. What a result screen. So it just shows everybody's dead, but Sigma, Phi, and Luna have enough points to leave. How interesting. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet. Since Luna didn't vote, she got set to ally automatically. And the other six got penalized. Here are some more AB game rules for you. Yada yada yada, this reminder. Then again, five of them are already dead. We don't know where Quark is, but his bracelet's already off. Yeah. That means all those penalties are meaningless. Why did Luna show up then? I mean, we've got our 9 BP now, but... Alright. What do you want to do, Sigma? Do you want to leave? What? You're kidding, right? Weren't you the one who kept going on about how Quark's still alive? I can't just run off and leave him here. You sure? Yeah. Well, that's a relief. I was hoping you'd say that. Oh, that smile's so precious. Well, let's get moving. We need to find Quark. And Luna too, right? Luna? Hmm. Where is Luna? She clearly participated in the game. But how did she get out so quickly? Right? Is she still in the room? Just hiding? And now locked in there? I don't know. So this round four of the Amidex game will be the star round. Star keys are required. Not like we really need to play though, right? Phi and I checked our bracelets out of sheer reflex. I was a magenta pair, just like before, but Phi had changed to a red solo. It didn't really matter, though. Both of our bracelets showed the number 9. All we had to do was open the number 9 door, and we'd never have to play another AB game again. Alright, Quark comes first. Let's go. She spun around and headed for the cyan door. I followed on her heels.
where are we going to find Quark? I think we heard Temyoji talk about him liking to hide in closets or the little cabinets or like the cubbies in the PEC or something like that. Taking our time, looking around. Here we are in the pantry now. Warehouse B. The security room, where Phi had a few sus minutes of us being asleep to do whatever she pleases. I don't even remember what timeline that was, though. K and Dio dead. The Gollum Bay. Not making a whole lot of progress, are we? Sigma, there's something I want to ask you. What is it? There are three doors here. You, Alice, and Luna went through the one on the right. The That took you to the Gollum Bay, right? Oh, interesting. So Luna was even one of the people to explore the Gollum Bay with us. That's crazy. Yeah. According to the map, that's the door on the bottom. There's a lever on that thing in the middle, right? We pulled it, but it only opened one of the doors. What about it? Well, it looks like they're all open now. Hmm. Take a look. See the lock? Open? Yeah. Then who the heck opened it, and how? There's only one person who could have opened it. Quark or Luna? Oh, Luna. Luna. I'm trying to think then. If Luna, if this confirms that Luna's able to open the doors, which would make sense given her status as a golem and in connection to Zero Junior, she must have been the person to have taken the key to K from that other timeline. But why? Alright, let's head in. I don't even remember what the events were of that timeline or anything like that. I kept mixing, mixing it up with another timeline anyways. I kept thinking it was Dio, but... We'll see. What the heck are these things? I think they're treatment pods of some sort. What mint pods? <laughs> Even as I spoke, part of me knew what they were. I didn't know how or why, but I felt a strong sense of deja vu when I looked at them, and suddenly realized I knew exactly how to operate the pods. It was a strange, unsettling feeling, as if somewhere deep inside was a version of myself that I didn't actually know. Hmm? One of them is lit up. The one on the left. Is it being used? The glass is all fogged up. I can't really see inside. Let's crack it open then. Yeah. Who are we gonna find inside? None other than... Quark. Quark? So there's obviously a lot to think about here. The first of which is, well, Quark is here, safe and sound presumably, without his bracelet, but also, Quark could have only gotten here if Luna brought him there, right? Our feet pounded across the floor of the warehouse. <laughs> this is it. Quark's body bounced in my arms as I ran. His pulse and breathing were normal. He was limp and unconscious, but he was alive. The pod's display had given us a little information on his condition. As far as we could tell, he'd been given an anesthetic, which had put him to sleep. Yeah, Luna was taking care of him. Without tr without revealing that she was obviously a golem, slash could go through all the different doors. Interesting. So now that Luna's just a golem, we're okay with leaving her behind? What? Ready? What's wrong? 
You're supposed to say, yeah, sure. Um, is it really okay for us to just leave? What the heck is this? You want to stay here? What if Luna kills you too? What? Think about it. Alice, Clover, Temyoji, the old woman, even Dio and Kei? There's a good chance Luna killed all of them. All of them? I don't, I don't remember if this is one of the timelines where Alice murdered, was murdered or if she killed herself. I think this is one where she was murdered. But I think from the security room footage, which we visited, so it's, it's a timeline in which we've seen the security room footage, I think we decided that it was actually Dio who killed Alice with the Myrmidon knife and all that jazz, I think? But Fi should have known that too. So why would she sh suggest otherwise? I don't know. But why? Why doesn't matter. Remember what we saw in Clover's thigh? 016. And what's the same what's that the same number as? The last three digits of Luna's product ID. Where did we find the old woman's corpse? In the AV room that Luna came out of. And if you're right, her brain is in the central computer core. That means she could have easily moved that crane, right? Ah, so that's the, the modality for that. She could have used it any time she wanted. That means any alibi she might have for not being able to move the crane is worthless. Exactly. So in this timeline, did she kill them? Because we know in other timelines, Dio killed the woman, right? Or at this point, Miss uh, Kurashiki, whether it's Akane or not, right? She must have moved the AV room. Alice noticed it right away. At the very least, that would mean Luna had a reason to try and kill Alice. Oh, I'm trying to remember what our thoughts were on that situation. I feel like at the time I thought it was Dio who had killed the woman, right? I don't know. To keep her quiet. She could also have murdered Dio and Kei. Remember their star keys? Luna must have taken them. Which puts her in the room with Dio and Kei. You understand, don't you? I admit none of this evidence is conclusive. But look at our options. You, me, Quark, and Luna. Who do you think is the most likely to be the murderer? Granted, you can't assume all of the murders were committed by the same person and that the murderer is even still alive. A murderer is likely to still be alive, still be alive but it's also very possible that whoever committed some of the murders, if it wasn't all committed by the same person, could have died at the hands of another person. Think this through, Sigma. Luna's a golem. That means she's a robot that's part of this facility designed to do God knows what. If what you said about golems in the center computer is true, she's basically a puppet of Zero Juniors. There really isn't much of an argument to be made here. The only option is to leave her here and get out. And in comes Luda. Robot
Have you ever heard of the three laws of robotics? Ah, that's part of what we talked about. A robot may not injure a human being or, through an action, allow a human being to come to harm. Ah, interesting. So then the question is going to be, does Luna obey these laws? And I think this first point immediately is one that we can uh, we can give to her, right? Allow a human being to come to harm. I feel like that's why she went out of her way to bring Quark to the treatment center, because she knew about it and was able to treat him, didn't want him to stay that way, right? A robot without the three laws is just a bunch of metal and plastic. Okay, you were right. Let's get out of here. Darn. Don't, don't scare me like that. Okay, I'm going to open it. You ready? You don't have to ask me. Isn't that what you always say? <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It's time we got out of here. Let's go. We're actually going to leave her behind. I hope we can take her with me. I, I still don't think Luna committed the murders. Part of me is probably just naively optimistic, as usual. But at the same time... I don't know. I don't know, I don't think so. With a heavy, labored groan, the number 9 door began to open. As soon as the gap was wide enough to admit her body, Phi slipped through it. I followed her through, Quark still cradled in my arms. And as we look back, we see Luna in the distance, crying or something. Inside was a massive lift platform, like the kind used to move industrial cargo. Phi turned to face me, and I shoved Quark into her arms. Huh? Before she could respond, I spun around and ran. What? The number nine door has been opened. It will remain open for nine seconds. Sigma? What the heck are you thinking? Get back here. Sorry, Fi. There's just... There's something I have to do. Take care of Quark. No. You don't mean... You're going to go find Luna? Gosh darn it, Sigma. Think about what you're doing. Sigma. Listen to me. Yikes. You can't do this. Wow. So that really just happened. I think somewhere in the back of Sigma's mind, he's thinking that Luna, being a golem, should be able to open the number 9 door if she pleases. That said, we've seen it with the other number, or not with the other number, the other golem that at any moment, Zero Junior could just end her, right? So I don't, I don't know. And with that, the nonary game ends. Are we actually going to find Luna? I had no regrets. In fact, with Flying Quark's successful escape, I felt a profound sense of relief. One of my objectives had been achieved, and a difficult choice had been made. My mind felt clear and focused, more so than it had in a long time. Alright, time to go. Luna's waiting. What? What? I'm so confused. One of his objectives had been completed. What is his objective? And Luna's waiting. Was there some unspoken communication they had? They were on the same page all along? Luna. I knew you'd be here. Buddy. You knew? Oh, right. We haven't talked here in this one, huh? Isn't this nice? This is the only place in this whole facility with anything green. 
I kind of feel silly for saying it, but it makes me think of the great outdoors. And I think it's the perfect place for a serious conversation. Being surrounded by nature makes me feel happy. I'm not sure what you meant just now, but... Are you talking about something that happened in another history? What? I know what you can do. <gasps> Here we go, guys. Here we go. Someone told me about it once. They said that you have the ability to transport your consciousness through time. So she's known about that. But who told her? I wonder if she's in a roundabout way saying that she was given that information by Zero Senior or Ju Zero Junior. Or is she a golem that's really been around for a long period of time and had the chance to meet another human who was able to tell her? I don't know. Who told you that? Luna looked down at the music box around her neck. Carefully and delicately, she twisted the dial on the bottom. Sigma. Aren't you here to ask me something? Why I killed them, perhaps? Well, actually, I already know you didn't do it. Oh? Why do you think I didn't do it? I'd like to know your reasoning. Alright. I nodded and took a moment to compose my thoughts. Might as well start with the old woman. There's no point beating around the bush, I suppose. Dio killed her. Why do you think so? I love this music. Her left arm had blood spatter all the way up to the elbow. Except for a stripe on the wrist that was perfectly clean. What could have caused that? My guess is a bracelet. It got covered with blood and kept her wrist clean. Obviously none of our bracelets had blood spatter on them, but Dio's bracelet reacted to the luminol. That meant Dio's bracelet had to have come from the old woman. Is that your proof? That's why you think Dio killed her? No, that's only enough to suspect it. After all, he could have just taken the bracelet after someone else killed her. Then why aren't you so sure? Because he confessed. What? After his bracelet reacted to Luminol, I confronted him. Alright, fine. You caught me. I did it. I killed the old woman and took her bracelet. Wait. When did that happen? In a different timeline. Isn't that against the rules? What rules? I hope you're not going to try and bring up Nox's Ten Commandments. Doesn't really matter if it's against the rules or fair. The truth is the truth. Let's say that Incident B happens, and after that, the timeline splits into Timeline A and Timeline B. I don't think it's unfair to base a theory in Timeline A on information I found in Timeline B. After all, A and B both came from the same place, P. If you trace the history of both timelines, you'd end up back at Incident P. Now, if I could change what happened with Incident P by visiting Timeline A or B, then yes, it'd be a different story. I don't know that it'd be unfair, per se, but I'd certainly be breaking some pretty big rules. Like, you know, the principle of causality. I'm sure that Dio killed the old woman. By extension, that means you couldn't have killed her. I'm assuming Dio wasn't originally intended to be part of the Nonary game. Somehow, he got in and took the old woman's place. That's how he ended up as Quark's partner. This is just an educated guess, but I have a feeling his plan was to replace one of us. 
I doubt it mattered which one. I have no idea why he would want to do something like that, and I don't know how he did it either. But the fact remains that he did. He hid in the warehouse on floor A and waited for someone to come out of one of the AB rooms. That someone turned out to be the old woman. She left Quark asleep in the AB room and came out on her own. Somehow he managed to get close enough to stab her. He did it near the wall with the graffiti on it. I'm guessing he stabbed her from behind so that he wouldn't get any blood on himself. As soon as she was dead, he wrapped the knife up in the handkerchief. No, wait, actually... He probably took the bracelet first. Then he would have needed to wipe the blood off so he used the handkerchief for that too. Anyway, the point is, he got the bracelet and put it on. Then he wrapped the knife up and hid it between the rightmost AB room and its neighbor. He probably didn't expect that they'd move, or he would have put it somewhere else. After that, he headed back to the AB room that the woman had left. Quark would have still been fast asleep, so as far as he knew, Dio was there the whole time. This does raise a few other questions, but I'll save those for later. For now, let's move on to the other murders. Well, actually, one of them probably isn't a murder. What do you mean? I'm talking about Alice. I'm pretty sure she... committed suicide. All of humanity is going to die. Adults. Children. Everyone. Everyone. Yeah, we've seen Alice kill herself in quite a few timelines at this point. There won't be anyone left. I... I'd rather die here. She'd been infected with Radical Six. I think that infection caused her to take her own life. She used Dio's knife, which she'd found in the warehouse after the AV room moved and exposed it. She took it with her, and then used it to stab herself in the crew quarters. Ah, so that's the missing part here. I should have known. She found the knife, so she would have had it. It's not like Dio had to have brought it in and then just left it there, right? I feel like I talked through that when we originally discussed it, but I didn't remember that for sure. <laughs> Next are Clover and Temyoji. The first question is who put the handcuffs on them? The clue is the message Clover left, 016. If you think about it though, it doesn't make sense. Clover's left hand was in the handcuffs. That means she would have had to write with her right hand on her right thigh. I feel like it would be really hard to do that, you know? Why not just use your left thigh? Wait, what? I don't think it's that exceptionally difficult to do the right thigh versus the left thigh. <laughs> the thing is, I think she did. When she died, her legs slumped together and the message got transferred to the right thigh. <laughs> we just never saw the original because we didn't bother to check the other leg. That's that's the, the linchpin here? <laughs> is that we saw this and didn't take the second to look at her other thigh? and it just transferred smoothly, completely, without any smearing or anything to the other leg when her legs slumped together? I don't, I don't think so. For one thing, for it to have gone on her other leg, it, her legs had to have been in contact at the same place, right? And then afterwards, they would have had to change position so as to expose it on one leg while concealing it on the other. I feel like that process would have smeared it or blurred it or whatever, or given some suggestion that it came from the other leg, right? And... <laughs> I, I love that Sigma's initial suspicion was like, yeah, but why would she write on her right leg? That's so much more difficult with your right hand. I think you would do it on your left leg. Like... <laughs> But whatever, it's fine. In other words, she wasn't trying to write 016. She actually wrote Dio. She was trying to write Dio. With her dying breath, she was trying to tell us the name of her killer. I think I mentioned that it could be Dio if it was backwards or, or something like that, but... <laughs> of course, that's hilarious. Now, about Kay and Dio. I think there's a pretty good chance Dio killed Kay. 
Yeah, I mean, when we were putting this whole sequence of events together, we thought it was most likely Dio who did that. Um, it's just the only the only thing is that Dio, in English, in lowercase, is like 016 backwards, right? Or reflected. And that's the only thing that was pointing to Luna. But the other thing is, it's not like Clover would have even known that that was Luna's product number, let alone that she was a golem, so that's not very convincing regardless. Here's how I imagined it happened. Kay probably sprayed Dio's bracelet with the luminol. We found the bottle in Kay's robe. He wouldn't have seen the reaction immediately, but Dio would have known what was coming. As soon as Kay turned the lights off, it would be clear that Dio had taken the old woman's bracelet. My guess is he decided to take preemptive action. When we found their bodies, the lights in the rec room were on. Maybe Kane turned to switch the light off, and Dio took that opportunity to attack him. Kane was hurt pretty badly, but he didn't die right away. He probably managed to grab the spear and stab Dio. Then he died. So that accounts for all six bodies, none of them your fault. I mean, I, I agree with it. Sigma. I'm glad you don't think I did it, but... All of your theories are just, well, theories. Like Alice committing suicide, how can you be sure? Say she was infected with Radical Six. She could have been murdered before her symptoms even began to present themselves. As for Clover and Tenmyoji, I could I could easily have killed them. You don't have any proof that Clover's message was mirrored like you say, or even that it was supposed to refer to Dio. Even if it did, that's not conclusive evidence of his guilt. The same goes for K and Dio. I could have killed them both. I just... Why do you trust me so much? I'm a machine. I'm part of this place. How can you trust a machine? That's why I trust you. What? I trust you because you're a robot. Your robotness is just one more reason you can't be the killer. Well, three more reasons. Have you heard of the three laws of robotics? Rule one. A robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Sigma. Luna, I have to ask you. Can you tell me, well, everything you know? Your mind is in the central server. You should know everything that's happened here. Oh no, oh no, we know that as soon as she tries to tell him... There was a long pause. Luna stood up and walked deeper into the garden. I followed her in silence. Eventually, we reached the bench. Luna quietly sat down, and just like last time, I lowered myself down beside her. You were right. I didn't kill them. How should I explain? Well, actually, you got most of it right. That doesn't matter. Tell me everything. Well, first, yes. Dio did sneak into the facility. 
Kyu no tobira kara Eikai no soukou e to shinryu shimashita. He used the large cargo elevator and came into the warehouse on floor A through the number 9 door. Mada game wa hajimatte inakatta no de since the game hadn't started yet, anyone could go through it. <laughs> That's actually a really funny thing to consider. I'm also surprised that Zero Junior hasn't shut down Luna now, right? Maybe this is supposed to be an intentional part of the Nonary game that we learn this and use it in another timeline or something like that. But um, it does seem a little bit inconsistent with uh, the Gollum moment we had earlier, right? Unless we assume, of course, that this is all according to Zero's plan. That doesn't really sound like sneaking. It sounds more like he just walked in. Yes, I guess you could say that. He did get in pretty easily. But that's because Zero Jr. lured him here. What? What do you mean? Dio wasn't a surprise. Both Zeros knew that he was going to come. So they brought him here? In a way. But why? Because his presence was an important part of Zero's project. What project? I can't go into that right now. We'd be here forever. Right now, let's just focus on the murders, okay? Anyway, Dio found his way in. They made sure he didn't know that he was actually being let in. So why did he come here? To make sure Zero's project failed. Ironically, he was all part of the plan himself. His first step was to pretend to be one of the players. As for how he did that, you had it pretty much right. The old woman was the first one out, and he killed her under the graffiti. He put her bracelet on after he wiped the blood off it with the handkerchief. Then he wrapped the knife up and hid it between the 5th and 6th AB rooms. St still doesn't explain why that crate moved, though, right? Fifth and sixth? Counting from the left, in their original placement. In other words, the rightmost room would be the sixth room, and the one next to it would be the fifth. Right. After that, he went back into the 5th AB room where Quark was sleeping. Then he just waited for Quark to wake up. What were you doing while that was happening? Nothing. I couldn't do anything. My body had been turned off. Zero Jr. had powered me down. My body wasn't activated until after Dio went into the fifth room. I couldn't help her. All I could do was watch while she was murdered. That's sad. Everything in this place is controlled by Zero Junior. I couldn't try and prevent Dio from getting in either. Wait, if Zero Junior controls everything, then he was the one who moved the sixth room with the crane? Yes. That's right. 
Zero Jr. moved the room, not me. Then, who moved the old woman? Me. It took me 10 minutes to get out of my AB room once I was turned back on. I ran over to check on her as soon as I did. Then I carried her back to the room I'd been in. Why did you do that? Because I was ordered to. Oh? What? Luna, listen to me very carefully. What? This is a memory of Luna interacting with the old woman? Huh? As you already know, the final stage of the project begins in two hours. Oh, that's right, and we remember from Kay's memory that the old woman was aware that in order to participate in and advance the, the project, the research, yada yada yada, she would have to die, right? And also what's interesting is the old woman... Oh my goodness, this is actually super nuts. So the old woman... If we know, or presume is Akane Kurashiki, we know from 999 that she becomes Zero in the future and runs a Nonori game, right? Or we know that she becomes Zero in the future and she goes back and interferes with slash participates in almost remotely through the morphogenetic field in the Nonori game of 999 to ensure that it proceeds as she intends so that she can be the Zero in the future, right? And so... <laughs> The Akane in the future is, understandably, a Zero right now. Zero isn't necessarily one person, but a group, and in a sense, she is acting as Zero in the moment, helping to run this nonary game very intentionally, with the researcher who, between the two of them, helped raise K, who is a clone of Sigma. This is, this is nuts, but I think that kind of puts it together, right? That old, that the old woman, who's Akane, who has admitted in 999 that she becomes Zero in the future. Oh man, that's crazy. As you already know, the final stage of the project begins in two hours. This will be the culmination of many years of hard work. We cannot afford failure. We still don't know what the purpose is, but... Yes. I understand. Then let's make sure. What is your mission? Oh, and so another interesting thing is they lured Dio in intentionally and the old woman, you know, knowing that Dio needed to be in the game and they wanted to lure Dio in, but also <laughs> the only way they could control who Dio would replace was to have the person who is running the project essentially sacrifice themselves, right? So this old woman says, I need this group of people in the nonary game, right? And so they arrange for everybody else to be there, and then they include themselves knowing that Dio is only going to, you know, quote, participate if he sneakily makes his way in. But in order to do that, he needs to sneak in and he is essentially let in and take somebody's bracelet. Knowing that he would want to do that, but also wanting to ensure that none of the other very intentionally chosen participants are eliminated, she puts herself in the nonary game so that she can make herself the sacrifice Dio needs to participate. I think that's what's going on. Wow. So anyways, she says, what is your mission? Enter the nonary game as one of the participants and observe the actions of the other players. Ensure that they do what they are supposed to and guide them down the correct paths. How many players will there be? Myself and seven others, ma'am. 
Will you be participating as well? Yes, our plan dictates that I must. Oh, of course! They're in the director's office! An individual by the name of Dio will be entering this facility presently. He has been led to believe he is doing so undetected. You've been briefed on him already, correct? Yes. He will murder the first person to leave one of the AB rooms, and take their place. If a pair is the first out, he'll probably kill both of them. That's all the information I've been given on him, ma'am. Um, I... Is there a problem? With all due respect, ma'am, I would like to state that I don't feel right about this. We know someone is going to be killed, and we're just going to let it happen? I also have doubts about the use of Radical Six, the intentional use of Radical Six. What? Are, are you sure? Infecting all these people with such a horrible disease? That is none of your concern. So everybody's been infected with it? Or is it is that like a potentially everybody's infected, right? Your only concern is to follow your orders. But... Luna. Luna. I am giving you an order. I am in command, and you do as I say. You are programmed to do as I say. You know this. Yes. Good. Now, I have one final order. Another order, ma'am? Yes. When you leave the AB room, the person Dio has killed will still be there. I would like you to move them. Where? To the room you were about to enter, the 6th AB room. But why? Not your concern. As a participant in the game, you must have as little knowledge of it as possible. That is why I have made sure you are unable to access any classified data. There are things you must not know. In order for this project to succeed, we need you to be as close to a clean slate as possible. There are some things you already know which, ideally, you would not. Unfortunately, this is unavoidable, so you must refrain from divulging anything you know about the project to the other participants. You must never tell anyone what you know about Dio, or the body, or that you carried it to the 6th AB room. You will have to pretend you know nothing more than the rest of the participants. Is that in order? Yes. 
Do I make myself clear? I... Yes. So that settles it. After that, I went into the AB room as I'd been told to. As soon as I stepped inside, my body deactivated. But since my brain is in the main computer, I was still awake. So I still saw everything. While I waited, I used the security cameras to see what was going on in the rest of the facility. And you saw the old woman being murdered. Yes. It was hard. What I was seeing made no sense. Several of my higher level processes nearly failed. To think that she would be the first person to come out. I think she knew that Dio was going to kill her. When she said she had one final order for me, I didn't understand what she meant. Like a fool, I told her I didn't approve, but I had no idea what she was prepared to do. When she died, whatever I have that passes for a heart felt like it snapped in two. Wow. What a story. I... I think I understand. Everything you did, you did because you'd been ordered to? Yes. And it was the old woman who gave you those orders? Then is she Zero Senior? No. What? But if she gave you the orders... She did, but she wasn't the only person I took orders from. Okay, so she's like functionally part of slash involved with Zero... Maybe not properly Zero Senior. Obviously we've seen Zero Senior from the other, uh... From the other timeline. In the director's office. There was someone else. Yes. And that person is Zero Senior? Yes. They worked together to develop the project she mentioned. So I suppose technically my orders came from both of them. And they were both controlling Zero Junior too. I told you before that Zero Junior moved the 6th AB room. Although that's strictly true, he didn't do it of his own free will. They ordered him to do it. He was following orders, just like me. But why? I don't know. I really don't. Maybe they did it so that people wouldn't suspect me. If they didn't want people to suspect you, then why have you moved the body in the first place? Eventually we'd figure out that the rooms had been moved. And that she was in your room. I'm also so curious why in some timelines it's just not even a thing, right? She's not even there. Then maybe they wanted the opposite. You mean... Maybe they wanted you to suspect me. That doesn't make sense either. If they wanted people to suspect you, why move the room? No, 
Then maybe they only wanted certain people to be suspicious of me. You mean like Alice? Yes. Perhaps they wanted Alice to find the handkerchief and the knife. That would explain why they moved the room. So they somehow knew Dio would hide the knife there? Yes. I think so. But how could they know that? Well, whatever the reasons were, Alice did notice that the room was moved. Which meant that Clover also figured it out. And just like you said, Alice used the knife to take her life. Clover didn't realize that, though. Or perhaps she didn't want to. In any event, she decided that I must have killed Alice to keep her quiet. So she confronted me. It was right after the second round of the AV game. Using Phi's timetable, that would be zero hours, zero minutes. Wait. You were listening to us in the security office? Yes. That wasn't all I was listening to, though. I know everything that happened in the facility after my body collapsed. You were watching through the security cameras. Yes, I was. I could see and hear everything. Anyway, we're at zero hours, zero minutes. I was in the hallway on floor A when Clover found me and took me to room two in the crew quarters. We entered at about zero hours, one minute. She was very forceful. I know you killed Alice. Tell me the truth, and I'll let you live. Now fess up, I'm only gonna give you one chance. If you lie, or try and play dumb or something, I'll, I'll kill you right in front of her. I told her the truth, of course. I explained that I hadn't killed Alice. That she'd been infected with Radical Six, and it had caused her to kill herself. Clover was never going to believe that, though. We argued about it for nearly nine minutes. It wasn't just Alice she asked me about. She asked me about the murder of the old woman and about the AB room being moved. She wasn't very nice about it. But I couldn't answer any of her questions. Because of your orders? Yes. Then, at about zero hours, ten minutes, she must have run out of patience. She stuck her hand in her pocket and started moving toward me. She backed me up against the wall. And pulled her hand out of her pocket. She was holding the injection gun. 
私はとっさに彼女の手からそれを奪い取ろうとしました。I tried to take it away from her. 助けを求めて必死に叫び声を上げながら。I even screamed for help. しかし彼女は当然のごとくそれを手放そうとはせず。She refused to let go, of course. そうして激しく揉み合っているうちに。While we were fighting over it. Whoa, hold on a minute. The trigger got pulled in the fight. I get that part. What I don't understand is why it did anything to you. You mean because I'm a golem? Yeah. One of my orders was always to act like I was one of the players, a human. Any human injected with that amount of chibukurine would die. That's why you, uh, died? To keep up the facade that you were human? No. I collapsed because Zero Jr. turned off the power to my body again. He probably felt he had to. Maintaining the illusion that I was human was probably in his orders, too. So, to make it look like I had died, he turned the power off. Whatever the case, it was an accident. I don't think Clover ever intended to actually kill me. She only took the injection gun to try and threaten me. How can you be sure? When I collapsed, she looked terrified. She checked for my pulse and listened to see if I was breathing. She also shook my body and called out to me several times. If she'd meant to kill me, why do all that? After a few moments, she ran off to the infirmary to get the AED. You mean the defibrillator? Yes. That uses an electric shock to restart the heart, right? Correct. So that was why she left? Yes. At 0 hours 11 minutes 40 seconds, Clover left the cabin in the crew quarters. She ran off toward the infirmary. On the way, she bumped into Dio. Dio? Yes. I guess she just saw him, really. They didn't talk. She just ran past. And he just watched her go by? Yes. I imagine he was curious, of course. He probably wondered what she was doing. But he chose not to go after her. He had something else to do. At zero hours, twelve minutes, Dio enters the room. He seemed pretty surprised to find my body. Yeah, I bet. It didn't take him long to get over it, though. Classic Dio. Wouldn't imagine it would. What did he do then? He'd gone there for two reasons. One was to get Alice's bracelet, which was a blue solo. Right. Without it, Dio and Kay, the yellow pair, wouldn't be able to get through the secondary door. Right? 
Yeah. But he couldn't find it. Of course. If I had already taken it by then. But there was something else he wanted to do, too. He was there to take the knife. Removing it was gruesome. But why did he want the knife? Was it because he'd used it to kill the old woman? No, I don't think so. Then what do you think? Yeah, I agree with that. I think he didn't want anyone to see the engraving on the knife's blade. That's why he did so well after he killed the old woman. Why wouldn't he want anyone to see that? Do you remember what it said? There was a word engraved on the blade. Myrmidons. Yes. What does Myrmidons mean? It's the name of the organization he belongs to. Uh, what is it? Like a club or something? Come on, Sigma, you gotta, you gotta remember this, man. I don't think so. Well, what is it then? Um, I don't really know. No idea? I'm afraid not. Wait, wasn't he here to try and stop whatever Zero was doing? Yes. Then... Hmm. Wouldn't that mean that he's on our side? Um... I don't know about that. He's killed four people. I'm not really sure he's on anyone's side. Hmm, you got a point. Darn it, this is ridiculous. I guess this enemy of my enemy isn't my friend, huh? May I continue? Yeah, keep going. After he took the knife, Dio rifled through... Rifled? Riffled? Rifled? Through what few belongings Alice had. Luna said he didn't seem to be looking for anything in particular. He was probably just checking to see if she had anything useful. That was where he found the key to Kay's suit. He didn't seem to have any particular reason for taking it. At least as far as Luna could tell. At 0 hours 13 minutes, Dio left the room. He heard Kay opening the cyan door and ran out. When he left, he was heading toward the infirmary. My guess is that he was going after Clover. He found her with AED. She was probably planning just ignore him and head back, but... Dio didn't let her. Hey, wait. Just what are you planning to do with that thing? Thinking about trying to resuscitate Luna? And why would you want to do that? You were the one who killed her, weren't you? When Clover tried to push past Dio, Luna said they began to fight. The heck do you think you're doing? Dio pulled the knife out of his pocket and pointed at Clover's throat. That was when he showed up. Dio? What the heck are you doing? None of your business. Stay out of this. You see that little crap? Like heck. He let out a yell and leapt toward Dio. The younger man dodged him easily and lashed out with the knife. Temyoji caught Dio's hand with a grunt, and for a moment the two men struggled. Then as the knife edged closer, he wrapped his other hand around the blade and tried to force it away. But Dio was a much younger and stronger man, and the wound... wound? 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 Temyoji gave himself with the knife didn't do him any favors. 
He put up a valiant fight, but with a roar, Dio threw him off. And Temyoji collapsed to the floor. What are you going to do? Come on, Clover, use all that training you have! Let's see. How about this? <laughs> How cute. You two really look great together, you know? What are you going to do to us? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to handcuff you to a sink. Actually, I already have. Are you going to beat us to death or something? <laughs> no, nothing so tasteless. What are you going to do then? How would you like to make a bet? A bet? You've got 20 some minutes until the primary white door is open. So I'd say you've got 25 minutes until they close, give or take. If somebody happens to come by here before the door is closed, then you might live. But if nobody finds you, well, we'll be penalized. Exactly. So, I suggest you start screaming for help. Now. And for, unfortunately for you, just about all the rooms in this place are behind at least two nice, thick doors. So, unless they're pretty close, nobody's gonna hear you scream. Well, I'm off to the floor B warehouse, okay? Enjoy your last 25 minutes. Later. Classic Dio. Classic. Twenty-five minutes passed and no one came. Of course, by then there were only three other people who could have come, apart from Dio. You mean me, Fi, and Kei, right? Yes. You were in the crew quarters at this point. Yeah. Kei had told us about you. We'd also noticed that the knife in Alice's chest had been removed. If only we'd known what was happening in the infirmary. Unfortunately for Clover and Temyoji, their time had come. Once the primary white door closed, both of their bracelets injected them with Soparil. The anesthetic, right? Yes. Almost immediately, they started to feel sleepy. I think that's when Clover realized she was definitely going to die. That was when she decided to leave her message. Just as you said, she wrote on her left thigh with her right hand. And the word she wrote was Dio. Yes. As for what happened in the rec room... Well, I guess I don't really need to tell you. 
Your theory was essentially correct. What you said was what happened. So K sprayed Dio's bracelet with the luminol, and then while his back was turned, Dio attacked him with the axe. Dio mortally wounded him, but didn't kill him, so K turned around and stabbed Dio with the spear. And I guess that's when we found them. Yes. When did K get the luminol? After they went through the white door, Dio and K found themselves in the director's office. When they were done there, they headed back to floor A to look for everyone else. They went to the crew quarters first, then to the infirmary. Of course they found Clover and Temyoji's bodies there. Dio expected to find them, of course, but he pretended to be shocked. Anyway, Kei checked them over for anything useful. And that was when he found the luminol. But not the word Dio on Clover's thigh. <laughs> right. That's everything that happened. Do you have any questions? Well, what do you think? <laughs> um, well, the first thing is Quark's bracelet. Why was it in the infirmary? Tenmyoji had it. Then when Dio attacked him, it fell out of his pocket. But why did Temyoji have Quark's bracelet? I told him where it was. When? Do you remember when you were in the rec room with Fai and Temyoji? Yeah, when he sprayed us with the luminol, right? Sure, I remember that. Right after that. When he left the rec room, he went toward the green door to look for Quark. I ran into him at the end of the hallway, where the three doors and the switch are. That was when I told him. Look, Temyoji. The center door is unlocked. He took off through it without another word. That was the treatment room, right? Yes. Where Quark was sleeping? Right. It only took him a moment. As soon as he saw Quark, he ran to his pod and started crying. Out of relief, right? Yes. The display on the pod showed Quark's vital signs. It was obvious he was alive the moment you looked at it. Next to the pod was Quark's bracelet. That was how Temyoji got it. Why was Quark's bracelet off? I took it off. How? Aluminum foil? What? You mean the stuff from the crew quarters? Oh, you found it? Did you know that aluminum foil has electromagnetic shielding properties? What? 
So you just put the aluminum foil under the sensor, presumably? Yeah, so I mean, it's just basically saying the bracelet detects the electricity of the, the pulsations of, you know, the heart that are, you know, measured in the wrist. And just blocked that. Wait, so you're telling me the aluminum foil can block the electromagnetic waves your heart sends out? Yes. All you have to do is wrap it around your bracelet. And the bracelet thinks your heart is stopped? Yes. Holy crap. It was that easy all along. That's pretty out of nowhere. <laughs> anyway, I used some aluminum foil to get Quark's bracelet on. Then I put it next to the pod. Wait. Why was Quark in the pod to begin with? Oh, that's easy. I put him there. When did you do that? Remember when we were first looking for Quark? I found him unconscious near the entrance to the Golem Bay. So you carried him to the treatment pod? Yes. Were you the one who unlocked the treatment center too? No. I was not. Okay, so that mystery remains unsolved. I do not have the authority to operate any of this facility's machinery. So it was Zero Junior? That's right. He reactivated your body too, right? Man, I don't get any of this. Why the heck did he do that? Hmm. I guess it wasn't really him that did it, huh? He was just doing what Zero Senior and the old lady told him to do. Everything leads back to them, huh? <laughs> of course it does. So, are you going to tell me? Tell you what? Isn't that obvious? Tell me what this project is. Everything that happens in here has something to do with it. So why were we brought here? To play the Nonary game. And why were we supposed to play the Nonary game? That was part of the project. Why did Alice kill herself? Because she was infected with Radical Six. How did she get infected? Zero Senior and the old woman did that. Why? It was a necessary evil. It had to happen for the project to succeed. What would have happened if Alice hadn't committed suicide? Clover wouldn't have suspected me and she wouldn't have accidentally, um, killed me. Then what? I wouldn't have collapsed and Dia wouldn't have found my body. That would have meant the confrontation in the infirmary never took place. In other words, you're saying Clover and Temyochi died for this project. Yes. Well, actually, it was the Chibukurin that killed them. But they were only injected with it because of their bracelets. They were only wearing those bracelets because of the Nonary game. If the Nonary game was part of the project, then that's one more way it killed them. I guess. If you want to look at it that way. Now what about Kay and Dio? Why would they kill each other? Because Dio killed the old woman. He was worried about getting caught, so he tried to kill Kay before he could find out the truth. Then if Dio hadn't killed the old lady, what happened in the rec room would never have, ta had, would never have taken place, right? Yes. 
So let me ask you this. Why did Dio kill her? So that he could pose as one of the participants. And why did he do that? To disrupt the project. Then why did she let him kill her? The same reason they did all of this. It was a necessary evil. The project couldn't be allowed to fail. Six people died here. Four of them were murdered, one way or another, by Dio. At first, that makes it look like Dio is the reason they all died. But that's not true, is it? All of them, all six of them, they all died for this project. That means that the murderer, or I guess I should say murderers, were the old lady and Zero Senior, right? Please, Luna, tell me. What is this project about? Who is the old woman? Who is Zero? She can't. Sigma. Sigma. Would you hug me? What? Instead of answering, Luna wrapped her arms around me and buried her face in my chest. My own arms hovered in the air, confused about where they should go. I swallowed hard and tried to rein in my heartbeat, which had suddenly doubled. I was about to speak when I felt something warm on my chest. Was Luna crying? This feels... nice. Her voice shook as she spoke. I lowered one hand to her head and began to gently stroke her hair. Uh... Hey, Luna? What the heck is going on? I'm sorry. My ABT is usually held in place by muscle fiber. But after Clover gave me the tubo curarine. Okay, okay. I get it. Does, does it scare you? This is what I really look like. I'm a golem. Just a, a machine. A jumble of metal and plastic that pretends to be real. I wrapped my arms around Luna and hugged her as tight as I could. You believed in me this whole time. Yeah. Even though I look like... like this? Of course. I trust you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wish I could stay here forever. You feel so nice. But I think my time is up. What? I've done things I really shouldn't have. Do you remember what you asked me earlier? About if Zero Jr. had reactivated my body? Remember? The truth is, he didn't. I did. I went to the part of the core that controls Zero Jr. and I hacked it. What? Yes. That was the first thing. The second... 
Do you know what the second one was? If I had really wanted to, I could have saved Clover and Temyoji. Then Kay and Dio probably wouldn't have killed each other. That's not all. I could have stopped Alice from killing herself, and I could have even saved the old woman at the very beginning. In other words, I had the ability to disobey my orders. But I... I didn't. That's... the second thing. I broke the first law. I was scared. I... I was afraid to die. Obviously, hacking the core and taking control of Zero Junior systems is very, very bad. Golems who don't follow orders can become dangerous, so we're terminated if we disobey. You lose access to your body, of course. But everything that's stored in the core, your memories, your consciousness, is deleted. What? Wait, are you saying... Yes. Very soon now, I'll be gone. Zero Junior is probably recovering himself right now. Once he's done, I doubt I'll be around much longer. What? Why? I watched six people die and did nothing. I deserve this. No. No, you don't. Even if you had done something, you would have been killed anyway. You can't blame yourself. You did what you could. You're not wrong. This game is what's wrong. Forcing you to watch your friends die is what's wrong. Oh, Sigma. Thank you. I'm... I'm really glad I met you. Luna! Luna! It's going to be okay. I'm not gonna let them do this. You're gonna be fine, I promise. Just please don't... I'm sorry. My time's up. At least I get to... Die in your arms. Luna! Thank you. Sigma. And... Goodbye. Doctor. Doctor? But she couldn't answer. I squeezed my eyes shut and held her, unable to bear the thought of letting any more of her slip away. With one last quiet chime, the music box wound down. I was left with nothing but silence and the cold pool of tears over my heart. Oof. Wow. So that's an easy favorite ending. <laughs> Can we talk about that for a moment? I felt so bad. I didn't want to interrupt any part of that because it was so just like continuous and one thing after another, which is why this episode is like a marathon. But holy cow, what an ending. What an ending. That was incredible. 
Luna, the characterization, the explanation of everything, finally understanding all the events, and getting some insight into who Zero is and what the motivations are behind the Nonary Game Project, and how everything's really been designed from you know the very first step, even before the Nonary Game started, right? Everything had been planned. And now we're starting to finalize some of the connections between all the different people. We know Luna's a golem, but we also know that in breaking some of the rules of a robot, she simultaneously supersedes, but also limits her robotness, right? She kind of goes beyond being a robot into the area of essentially being human, but at the same time, she herself says that disobeying such a law makes you just a, a bunch of metal and plastic, right? Oh man, incredibly complicated, but also wonderful, wonderful ending. Luna is so precious. <laughs> She's so precious. <laughs> How is it that, in my opinion, the most human character thus far, or at least the best well-characterized character, in my opinion, is the least human character in this game? That's pretty crazy, right? Oof. So that's pretty crazy. We obviously learn a lot. We learn plenty by not going with Phi and Quark, who have made it outside. Presumably everybody's infected with Radical Six, actually. I, that's the impression I got. Which is pretty interesting. Why is it essential to the project? I have no idea, right? I mean, part of it is the game has supernatural elements, has unreal elements to it, in a way that the player can maybe theorize, speculate, but certainly can't confirm, and arguably can't, you know, solidify uh, any sort of, any one of those speculations, given what possibilities are out there. Cloning, robots with AVT that are indistinguishable from humans, morphogenetic field, right? There's no way you can read into that, so, so to an extent it's nice just kind of being along for the ride, right? And making what little deductions you can when available, but realistically, letting the game take you for a really nice ride through this story. This ending, I think, best best demonstrates that. So far, at least. But anyways, there we have the Luna end. Easily, easily my favorite ending so far. And with that, it only leaves one ending left. Well, I mean, we still need this bad end, presumably. And we need to find out where the Zero Bomb is, right? I think, actually, we might... Well, we'll see what happens in this game over end. Presumably, that bad end isn't going to hold too much important information, because I don't think the bad ends tend to, right? I don't think they do. They don't typically carry that much important information, I don't think. Yeah, doesn't seem like it. So we're probably not actually going to get that information. At this point, we probably have all the info we need to find it. We just need to disarm those three bombs and then eventually find the zero bomb. Whew, we're almost at the end of the game, but I need to give my voice a break. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. In the next episode, we're going to get that last bad end and then start disarming some bombs and trying to find the zero bomb and figure out what the project is and really put the final pieces together. And I hope you guys are looking forward to it just as much as I am. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete. Thank <laughs> you.